Hi there, my name is Vince from Mr Telephone and today I'm going to show you how you can move your router to a different location even if you have one of these installed to your master socket. So this is a VDSL faceplate similar to the one you would have if you were to have maybe BT Infinity fibre service or you might have the slightly more old fashioned ADSL faceplates or you might have the VDSL faceplate which is in the same shape as this. Okay, so Normally these are attached to your master socket, I'll show you that in a minute, but let's take it back a few years. Let's say four or five years ago, before you had BT Infinity, you would have a master socket similar to this in your hallway, and then you might have an extension going to an upstairs bedroom, and you might have an extension going to your back room or your office where your computer is. Your router used to be plugged in to this socket here, and you were quite happy with it there because you didn't want your router in the hallway because it was in the way. In the UK, master sockets were often installed in hallways because many, many years ago, that's where people used to have just one phone and it would be placed in the hallway and it was the best place for the phone back then. But nowadays, with all your walk around phones, you don't want to be stood in the hallway making a phone call. So, uh, and also you might not want your router in the hallway where everybody trips over it as they're coming in and out. So what happened was, BT come along and they installed you one of these. And then they said, you have to have your router plugged in to this top socket here. You no longer have your extensions plugged in everywhere, but you have to have your router plugged in here. And you went along with it because you do get the best speeds. Now, I'm not arguing with that. You will still get the best speeds if you do this setup here with your router plugged in here. But let's say if it's really annoying you that the router's plugged in here and you want your router plugged back into this socket in the back room again where it always used to be. Now in this video I'm going to show you how you can do that and if it affects your speeds just put it back to normal. This is not going to cost you anything apart from a bit of time. So uh, give it a go and you might be quite happy. You might not get any loss in speed or it might be minimal. If it does drastically affect your speeds then just go back to how it always was or you can think about maybe running like a Cat 5e lead instead. But uh, yeah, so basically I'm going to show you what to do. So this is your setup at the moment. What you need to do is, first thing you need to do is, you need to double check that you have the A and B terminal here. So if you zoom in there, you should see it says A and B next to those IDC terminals. Let that just zoom in. Yes, yeah, so you can see the A and B terminals here. Or you might have one of these sockets, and if you have a look, you've got the A and B terminals down the bottom. So you see all the numbers going down the side there, and then you've got the A and B terminals. Yeah, so you do have to check that you've got the A and B terminals. If you haven't got the A and B terminals, you won't be able to do this, because on the very early ones of these, you can zoom out again now, on the very early ones of these, you didn't need, uh, they didn't have the A and B terminals. And I believe on the very, very first VDSL faceplates, they didn't have the A and B terminals as well. But 95% of them do have the A and B terminals. So what you need to do is, what are the A and B terminals? Basically, on this socket here, this bottom socket here is the filtered socket. That's where you plug your phone. And the top socket is the unfiltered socket. That's where you plug your router or your modem. Now, your modem or your router needs an unfiltered signal. It will not work off a filtered signal. Hence the reason it won't work off your extension sockets because they are now filtered. You just need to plug your phone straight into them and they will work. But if you were to move these wires onto the A and B terminals in here, this now becomes an unfiltered socket. You can then get one of your old microfilters plug it in and now you can move your router to this location here because what happens is this cable now is an unfiltered signal and then the microfilter makes it a filtered signal and an unfiltered signal. So I'm just going to show you how to actually do that. So let's say we're going to pretend now that we want this socket to be the new place that we're going to put the router. 
So you have to go to your face plate here and you have to find out which is this socket. Now, it might be obvious, you might be able to just pull the wires. Either way, you will need to trace which is the extension you want to work on. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to pull all the wires out. First thing you need to do is you need to make a note of where everything goes because your wires might not follow the same color code in this video. You might be using these wires here that are the orange and blue and then the green and the brown uh, or you might be using external color code which is the orange and the white and the, the green might be on the uh, the green might be on the uh, terminal three so either way you need to get a pen and paper and you need to write down exactly what you've got here so for example if you were to call this the, the bedroom extension you need to write down white blue to five blue to two orange to three or it might be blue to two orange to five depending on the cable so don't go just by this video you need to do you need to go with what you've got in your own property. So I'm going to pull out these wires here. The reason I have to pull them all out is because the cable that I actually need was terminated first. If your cable that you need is terminated second, you can just pull out your wires and then leave the other wires in there. But in this instance, the cable that I want is terminated at the bottom. So I'm having to pull, pull all the wires out. Okay, so once we now locate our socket, which is this one here, I'm gonna push those wires to one side. Get all of the wires into one side. I'm now gonna re-terminate the extension that was going upstairs. I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail about where to punch the extension wires because I've already done a lot of videos on extension cables. What I would say is though, when you're pushing the wires back in, always do it on a fresh piece of wire. Don't go onto the wire that's already been punched in because it's already been cut by the IDC terminal. So always go onto a nice fresh bit of wire, like that. When you're doing your IDC tool, always down nice and straight. This is a professional version that also cuts the wire with the little scissors at the end here. But you can also use just a cheapo plastic version, but you will have to you will have to then snip the wires yourself using a little cutter. Don't just leave the wires run through because if they touch each other they can short out the line. So you have to make sure that they're cut like that. So now your extension upstairs is connected like it always was. But now we've got this extension going to the back room where we now want to put the router. So what we're going to do is we need to push the wires from here onto the unfiltered terminals onto the VDSL faceplate or the ADSL faceplate. Whatever faceplate you got it's the same principle for both of them. So if you're using one of these faceplates it's actually a lot easier because your wires are already here you've only got to move them from 2 and 5 up to A and B so it's nice and easy. So whatever's connected to 5 whatever is connected to number 5 up here you're going to be connecting to A and whatever's connected to number two, which is this one here, you're going to connect that to B. So it's quite, uh, it's quite easy on these ones, but it's slightly harder on these ones, but these are more common nowadays, so that's why I'm doing the video, uh, doing it on these ones here. So basically, all you do is, you're only going to be using the wires that are connected to two and five. So forget about the wires that were connected to number three, or your master socket might be slightly older and it might also have the fourth uh, terminal four as well, or it might also have terminals one, four, and six. This, this master socket only has two, three, and five because they're the only ones that are actually needed. One, four, and six have never been used. Even if the wires are punched into them, they serve no purpose. So you're only gonna be using the wires that were connected to two and five. So in this instance, blue was connected to two and white blue was connected to five. So I'm gonna do white, blue, to A. Now you might not have much slack to do this, but I'm gonna do white, blue to A, and I'm gonna do blue to B. So I'm just gonna punch those wires in. Now, when you're using this, you're gonna be punching, the wires are gonna be going in from this side, and if you can see that. The wires are gonna be coming in from this side and they're gonna be cutting this side. So that's the way that you use the, 
IDC in this one here. The wires come in from this side here, and you're going to be cutting this side. So I'm just going to cut that one there. Okay, so now this socket here, because we're now taking it from the unfiltered terminals on the blue and the white blue, they travel through the cable and they come up here on two and five as an unfiltered signal. So if you were to plug your phone straight into there, you'd hear all the white noise, which is the broadband signal, and your router would cut out. So let's just uh, put this socket back together. Also, if you've got enough slack, what you can do is you can pull this wire through. In fact, I am gonna do that. I'm going to pull the wire right through, and if you have a little look here, can you see that there's a little cable tie, a little cable tie area here? What we'll do is let's get ourselves a cable tie, put it through there, and let's put this, tie this cable tie up. Now when you're cable tying, always cable tie onto the actual cable sheath itself and not onto the wires and then cut off the excess of the cable tie. So let's try to make that a tiny bit neater. Okay, so that's what it's going to end up like. Yeah, and then what we do is we put the front plate back on. going to be on there like so. We've still got our extension upstairs which is already filtered so you won't need to plug a, a micro filter into the ups, an extension upstairs because it's coming off the front plate and the front plate is already filtered from the test socket here off the VDSL face plate. So the only way we need to put a filter in is into the uh, extension that we've made unfiltered. Which in this example we're pretending it's in the back room. Okay so your master socket again it will be just like before screw your screws back in and now on this socket here we just need to plug in the micro filter and that will then make that unfiltered signal into a filtered signal for the phone for the voice side here and then you will plug your little ADSL or your VDSL lead in here. Now, if you've got a VDSL lead from me previously, which is an RJ45 to RJ11, it will not work because these microfilters only fit the smaller RJ11 plug. So you're gonna to have to use your original lead that you got with your, with your package to begin with. Or you might have a better quality lead from me, which is ADSL, which is an RJ11 to RJ11, but you won't fit an RJ45 into there. But plug your lead into there to feed your router, let it all sync up, and uh, see how you go, see what your stats are, see if you're happy with it. You might not notice much difference at all, and then you've got your router plugged into a location that you actually like, rather than having everybody trip over it in the hallway. So, uh, good thing about this, this option here is you've probably already got these microfilters from before, and uh, apart from a bit of time, it shouldn't cost you anything. Yes, you may have to buy a tool, but you can buy a cheap plastic tool for a couple of quid, even, uh, even the professional ones that I've got are under £10. So uh, yeah, see how you go. Hopefully you'll, uh, hopefully it, it will prove useful to, you, to yourself. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. And uh, if you do want any of the master sockets or extension sockets, cables, stuff like that, then check out www.mrtelephone.co.uk. All right, thanks a lot for your time. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. Bye now.